This is your WAUK Daily News Roundup for The Shaw, 101.1 FM and 540 AM in Waukesha. Civic Media News. I'm Terry Bell. Here's what Wisconsin needs to know. The National Weather Service is in Rock County to survey severe weather damage from Sunday. The damage is to large trees, which could have been done by tornadoes. The Weather Service investigation will focus on Janesville and Milton. Tornadoes may have also touched down in Whitewater and Fort Atkinson Sunday. Cuts are coming to another Wisconsin college. The Turbo University in La Crosse is trying to lower expenses. 27 jobs are going away. The Turbo's president says enrollment is shrinking and the university's deficit is growing. A lot of people are on their way home from the busiest Memorial Day weekend for travel since the pandemic. Three and a half million Americans flew somewhere. Last year, uh, the cancellation rate was at a 10-year low. This year, so far, it's actually even better than last year, but we want to make sure that it stays that way. We're pressing the airlines to do their part. U.S. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg speaking with WISN-TV's up front. Wisconsin has a new acting corrections secretary. Governor Evers promoted Deputy Secretary Jared Hoy Friday. Former Secretary Kevin Carr retired in March. Hoy's worked for the agency since 2007 as a field supervisor, program and policy chief, and administrator. A Republican member of the University of Wisconsin Board of Regents says he plans to stay on even though his term has expired. Scott Walker appointed Bob Atwell in 2017. The state Supreme Court ruled two years ago that appointees can keep serving until the state Senate confirms their successors. The Biden administration is expanding health coverage to children of immigrants in the DACA program. DACA participants in the U.S. are three times more likely than the general population to be uninsured. Aline Eurico Badio Carrillo is in the DACA program. Not just for me, but I think it's a communal benefit. If I have access to medical care, then I'll be able to be healthier and then I'll be able to help others. But Dio Carrillo says immigrants and their families work many jobs vital to the economy. If you love coffee and chocolate, two high-profile chefs in the upper Midwest want you to know climate change is making them scarcer and more expensive. They host occasional dinners called Civil Eats to raise awareness. Margaret Klein-Solomon directs the Climate Emergency Fund. If they're using those dinners to tell the truth about the fact that everyone in the world is threatened by this, not in some kind of faraway future, uh, yeah, I think it could be great. She says it might be more effective to focus on how global warming is affecting staples like wheat and rice. This is Civic Media News. Climate watchers predict this summer's temperatures may set records, which could aggravate some medical conditions. Terry D. reports. Neurologist Dr. Ann Jones says when the body feels extreme heat and sweat evaporates, hypercoagulation or blood thickening occurs. This increases the chance for blood clots. Winter weather can also produce an instinctive response. The cold makes us kind of react with our fight or flight kind of drive and it makes our blood vessels close down or vasoconstrict and that can raise blood pressure up and that can predispose you to stroke. The study indicates more research could identify the impact of temperature change on stroke as a way to address health inequalities including the burning of fossil fuels, deforestation and industrial processes. This is Terry D. A new report shows the number of children on Medicaid varies widely from state to state. Now the pandemic-era protections are lifted. Brett Pivato reports. The Georgetown University report says nationwide more than 4 million fewer children were enrolled in Medicaid and the Children's Health Insurance Program at the end of last year versus spring 2023. The report estimates that in 70 percent of cases, children's coverage was canceled for procedural reasons such as difficulty navigating the state's website, reaching a person via a helpline, or not receiving renewal notices. Study co-author Joan Alker says states need to improve outreach to help avoid disenrollment because of red tape reasons rather than being ineligible. Some states chose to go very very slowly and carefully, but other states move very quickly to disenroll children, even though many of them likely remain eligible. The report notes new programs in some states are offering multi-year continuous coverage to young children. Brett Pivato reporting. Common eating disorders like bulimia and anorexia are showing up more often now in young people who play sports. Eric Tegadoff reports. 
Common eating disorders like bulimia and anorexia nervosa are showing up more often in young people, especially those who play sports. Dr. Susanna Block is a pediatric hospitalist. If the sports environment starts to focus too much on performance or weight, that can really lead to an unhealthy situation for these teen athletes. So our goal is to help our kids get the benefits from sports without putting too much stress to promote eating disorders. She acknowledges that some sports focus heavily on weight, such as boxing and wrestling, where athletes are designated by weight category. Other, more aesthetic sports, like gymnastics and diving, also have a focus on weight. Block says the unfortunate irony is that eating disorders ultimately lead to poor athletic performance. I'm Eric Tegadoff. And that's what you need to know. I'm Terry Bell, and this is Civic Media News. Benches emptied out in Boston. Hi, I'm Mike Clemens with sports. The Brewers lost 2-1 Sunday to the Red Sox after winning the first two games of the series. But for whatever reason, Red Sox pitcher Chris Martin got upset. The Brewers tried back-to-back bunts in the seventh inning, and that emptied the dugouts. Jeff Levering on Bally Sports, Wisconsin. Here comes the Red Sox dugout. Here come the bullpen, and we got something on our hands at Fenway. Quentin Berry has to be restrained by Blake Perkins, but something going on at first base after that play, and the inning ended. After the game, Brewers manager Pat Murphy asked, why did his players jump in on the dispute? Well, that's not our first time. (laughs) No, that's not. Um... No, the guys play with a lot of energy, and from what I understand, first of all, it's over with. Nothing was was done. I think it was more of, I think their pitcher showed some emotion, and I think our people thought it was directed at them. I don't know if it really was or wasn't. I'm not going to speculate what the kid was doing, but if you're staring at somebody and you're saying it, it could be interpreted that you're saying it to them. So, you know, we we take offense to you're going to yell at us and say something and make it personal. We're going to stand up for ourselves, you know, but I'm glad it didn't lead to anything more than that. Like I said to the umpire crew that we've had before, once or twice, and I said, hey, you're not surprised, are you? (laughs) That's Brewers manager Pat Murphy. The crew at home now with a four-game series against the Cubs with sports. I'm Mike Clemens. A little breezy this morning, partly to mostly cloudy here through the day with a chance of a scattered thunderstorm by late this afternoon. Our high near 70 tonight, 55 tomorrow, scattered thunderstorms, otherwise partly cloudy, 68. Then on Wednesday, it will be sunny but cooler with a high of 61. I'm meteorologist Sean Cable. Outside now, it's 53. That's your WAUK Daily News Roundup from Civic Media. Subscribe to this podcast on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you find your podcasts. Find more news at WAUKradio.com.